as a foreigner looking in that the Korean government doesn't care about the military members and they should. The country is only as strong as its military. And that's factual. But on the surface, I'm like, okay, you know, yeah, anything that gets people more into the military and into this environment might be for the better. But more comprehensive mental evaluation would be significantly better. You don't even have a pressure like actual service. Hmm. Service comes out with that. You guys have one now. There's a gradual degree of reprimand. It depends on the severity of the, the issue, right? Uh, reduction in rank, loss of pay, separation from the military, it all goes up from there. But uh, assault is assault. If you lay your hands on someone, that is treated very seriously. However, uh, there was a situation with, uh, there was a guy that was getting hazed constantly. You know, they just, it started from home and then got all the way to Afghanistan as well. Uh, I told him way before Afghanistan, I said, look, you have two options. I said, you can option A, you can report these guys. I said, or B, you can swing out on them. I said, and even if they beat the crap out of you, you have their respect, why? Because you swung on them, you let them know I'm a man. And I said, RSC, you can cower down and then eventually you'll break. At the time, I saw he was going to commit suicide. I looked in his eyes and I knew, you just know. So I told the sergeant, I'm like, look, this guy's going to off himself by tomorrow. He was like, everyone was like, oh, you know he's not. And I'm like, no, I said, sergeant, look at me. He's going to do it, I know it. He was, and the sergeant was like, okay, take his rounds. No shit, the next day, I hear a weapon racked back. Next thing you know, we're all in an investigation. In the Marine Corps, there's not really a, a level like that. You can go, but if you do, you're a snitch. So it's like really the peer pressure that comes into play. Now, this, these days, Marine Corps, they encourage it. You know, things like that. What do you think about the I do think that it needs to be handled by people much smarter than me. <laughs> so I'm not sure if full conscription is the right way to go. But on the surface, I'm like, okay, you know, yeah, anything that gets people more into the military and into this environment might be for the better. But more comprehensive mental evaluation, even for our system, would be significantly better. Because identifying these risk factors for stress and, and socio problems uh, will definitely help reduce problems. So I've always respected the Korean military because they have to do the draft. A lot of people, when they comment, are or anything on the videos of mine, they say, well, you don't know how it feels because you have, you've never been drafted. But even being an American, our country wasn't always a recruiting country. Korea now is America's post Iwo Jima and Vietnam War era, where there was no option. You go or you go to jail. In that sense, if Korea were to make the pot more sweeter, I think a lot of Korean men will think, okay, it's not that bad because they have something to fight for. Before you have no motivation, eventually you will fail. So you just say, hey, you go because we tell you to, instead of go because later on when you are are injured, you get free health care. Or later on, if you're injured in, in duty, you get a stipend for the rest of your life. As a foreigner looking in, that the Korean government doesn't care about the military members, and they should. Because without your military, what is the country? The country is only as strong as its military. And that's factual. What's the relationship between senior and junior? In the Marine Corps, is different. If you're in infantry, for until you go to Afghanistan, in private first class, talk to each other. When you're a lance corporal in the Marine Corps, you don't go to a lance corporal talking like, like your best, like your buddies and best friends. There's protocol. Now, lance corporal privates, you don't go talk to a corporal or sergeant unless you guys are friends before or went to Afghanistan, something like that. When I went to Afghanistan, I came back, we were all on last name basis, like, hey, Stevens, hey, Smith, hey, you know, what's going on? What do you want for lunch? Things like that. But yeah, those are different levels of it. I think in the Air Force, it depends on whatever your advocacy is or your, your duty position, your, like your category yeah. and rank matters at a certain point. Like up to senior airman, you're basically the same. When you get a staff sergeant, you're like somebody's supervisor. So that's how you're treated. But for the most part, it's, it's fairly laid back. People refer to you by your last name. When you're in uniform and at work, you know, you do uh, rank and name. And then when it comes from the uh, enlisted group to the officers, there's also not as much intermingling and stuff. It's, it's kept fairly reasonable. I'm not friends with officers, you know, necessarily. I know them, but it's kept professional for the most part. Basically what he, what he said, you know, but you go through war, when you come back, rank doesn't really matter.
Yeah. Yes, in a, in a, in a combat scenario. Mm. You know, you're on first name basis at that. This may be the guy you have to save. This may be the guy you watch go meet Glory, you know, so you don't know. So everyone's getting to know each other more, you know. A lot like, of officers refer to you by your first name. Like I'd have like my commander come up to me like, oh, hey, John. Hi, Colonel. <laughs> okay, the last question. The spaces are very huge. This type of artillery to disorders. Is it really like that? The vast majority of American citizens uh, support the military. It, it is completely true. It is not propaganda. Because it is a voluntary service, because it is not a conscription, right? Signed on the dotted line, you know put our hand on our heart and swore an oath to the Constitution and uphold it, defend it against foreign enemies and domestic. And so that is worthy of respect. Now, I mean, we may not feel like we're deserving of that respect. I don't necessarily feel like I did anything that deserves that and stuff, but it makes me feel very special, very, very special. When anybody says, thank you for your service, and stuff, it's embarrassing. But I mean, I thank fellow service members for their service. And I, it's very important to me what we do. Yeah, it's not an exaggeration at all. I got my mom, sisters, family members, all of them say, oh, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you. I'm like, just stop. It's just stop. <laughs> uh, a lot of people say, like, we really, I really respect me. Some ask me stories about Afghanistan. Some ask me about stuff like that, uh, about the war and stuff like that. Is it fun? Just, you know, the questions that you should really ask. Uh, Afghanistan is not a place you really want to be. It's, it's hell. It's hell on earth. But it is good to see that there's people that respect the military and do buy because they did it for me. I, I declined it. We got back from Afghanistan July 6, 2011. And the sales sergeant said, look, when you get off of the bus, don't expect someone to thank you for your service. Don't expect someone to buy you a meal. Don't expect some girl to just hook up with you. You don't deserve anything at all. You signed the dotted line, you served your country, you fought in war, you are combat veterans. No one owes you shit. That's true. That stuck with me. Some of my guys are still with us, some went to Bahala. So That's no one true. owes you anything. Yeah, no one owes us anything. I, I've seen the Korean Marine on, on the plane one time before coming from Jeju. The plane was like basically trying to like rush off. And there's this lone Korean Marine sitting on a plane He's trying to get off. I don't know if he's trying to get to his duty station. I don't know if he's trying to get to his girlfriend, wife, mother, father. Who cares? He's a Marine. So I just literally, I held up. <laughs> I held up the line. That's good. <laughs> held up the line. That's good. He was like, uh -huh. I'm like, dude, I was like, bro, go, go. Super five, go, go. And he was like, oh. I feel so, I feel so good. I'm like, yeah, he got to go out first. Mm. But that kind of appreciation for someone's service to the country, which is what they are doing. They're putting their life, their liberty, their livelihood on the line to serve their country. That is worthy and deserving of respect, whether they had a choice in it or not. We don't even have expression like thank you for your service. Hmm. Service comes with that. You guys have one now. Maybe that should be a, a campaign you know, for, for Korean citizens to, to bring. Everybody knows that the Korean military are underappreciated, that it's viewed as, as almost a punishment or, or an imprisonment. At the same time, the Korean citizens and people who have been through the service understand that pain. To help solve that, right, is to change the mentality behind it and give them pride in the service. So maybe it would be a good idea to actually come up with a phrase or a thing that would be, thank you for your service. You know, and then just start saying that and you take the time and you say, hey, thank you for your service in Korean. I can I can tell you that's going to mean so much. It will. At first, I'll probably be like, what, what, you know, but if it catches on, it's going to completely change. change. And I know Korean people can do it. They've done harder things. Yeah. Case in point, Korean War. You guys have become like the top 10 GDP in the world. I mean, like, you can fix any problem, I guarantee it. Thank you for hearing them. Thank you. How was it today? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah? It was an honor to meet you. It's great to meet you too. Really? Yeah. It is. It is. The main reason why I came here was so I could meet a fellow Afghan vet. I, I don't have a lot of people around me right now. Yeah, same here. Uh, I have uh, my friend uh, Ken. He He's fought in Iraq and other places as well. Uh, it's really difficult to find another combat veteran and things like that. For those who are actually out there in the military service who is suffering or having any uh, issues with PTSD, you can use my Instagram and write me a personal message and talk with me if you can. You're not alone. Anytime you guys can reach out and talk, and go from there. Uh, likewise, you're free to contact me. Do not hesitate at all if you are going through any trouble whatsoever and getting help is the only way to get through pain like that. And 
We will listen, okay? You need, if you need help, please. Thank you for the honor and privilege of sharing our story. Thank you guys very much. Um, so while I was in Afghanistan, I met with Koreans and they gave me this. Do you know what a coin is? We, we got, Challenge coin. So the Korean military were stationed in Afghanistan. They were at a hospital there. Our captain wanted to trade with the Koreans for the American flag for his Korean flag. So I was the only one that spoke Korean there, negotiated the trade and everything, and he was impressed with my Korean speaking abilities. So he gave me and my captain a coin. And so I wanted to show you guys this coin. Pretty cool. It's, it's also one of the biggest. Well, pretty nice coin. Yeah. Man.